given that we are so dependent um, on, for instance, tourism and, and other activities that are associated with a healthy marine environment like um, the fisheries sector, aquaculture and so on and so forth, our marine resources have become point and center. Um, and that includes our coral reefs, our coastal vegetations like mangroves, seagrass beds, and of course our beaches um, and um, clean waters. Our coastal and underwater environment um, is almost like what you see on land, very dirty. Garbage, a lot of people dump their garbage in waterways, in canalways, in, in rivers, in streams. And because they don't see it, it's out of mind for them. But it, it flows into the ocean, everything flows into the ocean. So now we have a very polluted ocean underwater. And one of the, one of the worst part of it is that a lot of plastics get run off into this. And the big thing now is that it's disintegrating and forming what's called microplastics. From survey, we have realized that most of our sea creatures, especially the fish that we eat, are indebted with plastics. And these are plastics that are getting into our oceans because we do not dispose of our waste properly. So every year, the International Coastal Cleanup, which is headed by Ocean Conservancy, which is a body at Washington DC, engage individuals to assist in cleaning up our ocean lines, our waterways and underwater. It is extremely important that we take care of the coastline because whatever we do on the coastline impacts the ocean. And the marine life is something which is very vital to us as a community because we're actually involved in fishing and tourism. And also what it does is that it impacts the food that we eat. And don't forget that it also beautifies the community that we actually live. One of the ways that Ocean Conservancy have helped in dealing with this is to engage some of the individuals that have, that we get their trash litter labels. It's also one of the key components of this cleanup is to help make policies to to deal with marine debris, ocean um, conservancy, and ensuring that the government of the parties um, are involved in ensuring that we do our best to protect our ocean. Our location was um, that reef and wreck near VG Point. We usually refer to it as Boneyard, simply because there was a wreck there and um, there's still some remains of that wreck there as well, so it has some historical value to it. So we chose that site because it's near the harbour and oftentimes when we have heavy rains, you find a lot of debris from the harbour settling in that area. Many persons do not realise that the ocean play a key role in absorbing the carbon dioxide and the greenhouse gas emissions that we generate on a daily basis. So we, the ocean can be regarded also as what we call a sink in terms of absorbing the excess um, um, greenhouse gases that are emitted, thus making our environment cleaner. So when we talk about taking responsibility you know for the management of our environment it extends just beyond the social recreational pleasures of the beach for example we have to think about the fishing industry we have to think about the marine and um, industry in terms of um, shipping as well so environmental management and ownership is very important to our survival especially where we are within a very vulnerable um, part of the region our economic base is very much dependent on having a resilient um, environment our fish stock you know their habitats are mostly if you know your science in the coastal areas first because that's where the juveniles and that's where um, the, the life cycle begins and then eventually for those that go more outward they venture out eventually but you think of um, marine reptiles like turtles um, marine turtles nest on our beaches our sandy beaches and 
It is heavily um, dependent on having sandy beaches. And given the current status and the impact that we are seeing with regards to coastal erosion, sand mining, you can make that connection right there. If um, there's this ongoing and major issue with regards to marine pollution, and we talk about um, both in terms of water pollution from chemicals, infiltrations in the water um, column, but also in solid waste, um, solid waste pollution, um, plastics, all right, and non-biodegradable material present a huge issue for marine life. Um, the statistics show that over 1.1 million seabirds and marine animals are killed by um, plastics every year. We've seen reef health declining, more instances of coral bleaching as, um, as temperatures rise. Um, we have some more degradation of our beaches as the sand is taken away and, and redeposited elsewhere. We have degradation of our mangroves and seagrass beds. We have um, fishers who complain that they see less fish now than they used to, as well as some dive operators and other resource users. Um, we also have issues with certain fish stocks migrating further away or deeper so that it's harder to fish for them. For example, um, the queen conch or lubby. Right now we have a lot of fishers who complain that they have to go deeper and deeper to be able to catch them. And that's just a few of the climate change impacts that we've noticed so far. So it is a serious concern. And given that we have the broad mandate to contribute towards, um, if you want to take it, our um, national priorities with regards to safeguarding and protection of our, our, all our resources and all our natural assets, then you would we, we have a, a, a stick or we have an interest in not only pursuing whatever activities that can ameliorate this particular situation, but in seeking partnerships and collaborations that could help to reduce these impacts that we're seeing or improve the situation with, um, with regards to marine pollution um, in particular. We're here at the Azure Beach, but you could also, any waterway, a river, a canal, um, and what you do is you remove plastic. So for about three hours, we've been here this morning with this small group of individuals from four different organizations in the community and a couple unattached youth there. And we've been removing plastic and any form of non-biodegradable material that is on the beach. Um, of course, the one day and the few people here would not read this beach of everything but it goes a long way in mitigating against the effect that it can have on the biodiversity as well as the sustainable use of this area. The danger is actually what I call a silent danger. It's not a danger, you know, the garbage won't reach out and grab you. But the garbage will reach inside of you because fish will consume it. And we all, most of us consume fish and most of us go in the water and we dive or we swim or we snorkel and at some point this, this, this garbage um, especially the, the plastics can get into our system. We want to encourage solutions in general just to take that responsibility, just to make the links in terms of what you do in your home or how it connects to the, the ocean, how it connects to the fish vendors, etc. To ensure that we do not have to do this band-aid approach, but that we have a more sustained approach in keeping our environment clean. It becomes part of our daily, regular habit. You know, just having that mindset change is very important for us to understand and appreciate our environment.